Well, good morning. Welcome again to another podcast. Down to earth, but heavenly minded. I'm your host, Herb Risch. Well, I've been doing podcasts now for some time now. And uh, my topic always has been spiritual. And uh, I just wanted to share some stuff with you this morning about yesterday about our worship and uh, what had kind of transpired. Uh, how we worship, and it's a little, probably a little different than uh, some that worship out there uh, that go to a denominational type church. And uh, everything is all systemized, laid out. Uh, we're going to sing these hymns. We're going to have this speaker. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Everything's kind of orchestrated already for us. I go to a fellowship where we do things spontaneous. And we have no leader, per se, like a, like a worship leader or anything like that. At worship, we gather around a simple table with a loaf of bread and uh, little cups of wine or juice, I should say. We don't use wine. Uh, we use the, the juice of the grape or grape juice. Well, uh, yesterday, uh, during worship, we had a brother who opened worship, and uh, he read from Romans 5 and uh, shared some thoughts on Romans 5. And then we moved uh, into a hymn, uh, and then from there, we continued on in our worship. And uh, I shared uh, the just some scripture out of uh, Revelation, and it was only one verse. I am the Alpha, the Omega, first and the last, the Almighty. And one brother had gotten up and shared uh, from Genesis that dealt with the creating, creation of a woman, um, and also uh, that she was created from man. And then there was also another fella that uh, actually uh, shared from um, the fact that uh, the Word was with God and the Word was God from John 1. And all this seemed to be leading to the Word of God, the eternal Word. And uh, another brother got up and shared uh, some scripture, and then he shared a hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, and which was written by uh, Martin Luther. I'm just going to, just for a minute, pop up uh, that hymn. There it is. I looked it up uh, online, and I have to open this up so I can get at it here. It's uh, from harmony.org. And looking at Martin Luther, during the time that he wrote this hymn, uh, the Catholic Church was in pretty good control uh, and uh, he went against what the Catholic Church was teaching that salvation was by works and he's seen from scripture that it was by uh, grace and grace alone. Now Martin Luther was born in uh, is that Elton Elton in November tenth, fourteen eighty three. 
And during that time, uh, he lived uh, his life. Uh, the Catholic Church was persecuting those that went against the belief of the church. The church at that time was the Catholic Church. And uh, there were groups that were breaking off uh, and worshiping like I worship, uh, being spirit-led and not being led by any man. We don't have what we call priests and uh, our ministers. Uh, we do have leaders, but they're called elders. And uh, getting back to this hymn, though, I, I just want to really talk about the words to this hymn. Got it kind of small. I don't know if you can see this or not. Maybe I can make it a little bigger here. Let me just see. There we go. Maybe you can see this a little better now. Okay. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amidst the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe to seek to work us woe. His crafts and powers are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not as equal you know i wanted to try to get into the heart of martin luther when he wrote this hymn and as we read these words <coughs> excuse me as we read these words it kind of brings out what his thoughts were there was a spiritual war going on for the souls of men. And there was this organization that he was part of. He was a priest at the time. And uh, he loved the Lord, but he was not what you would call a born again Christian uh, when he first started a minister in the church. But when he was reading the scriptures, he came to the realization that man is saved by grace and grace alone, through faith, and that it is a gift from God. It's not of any works that we should boast. And uh, so this is what the Catholic Church was against. It, it was all about control. And right now, a lot of people are being controlled by what we call religion. And not only the Catholic Church, but there's others out there. And uh, so he's writing these words because of this war, this spiritual war that's going on all around him. Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. You ask who that may be. Praise Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabbath is his name. From age to age, the same. And we must win the battle. And he must win the battle, I'm sorry. Uh, of course, uh, we are part of his church, so we are included in winning the battle. But uh, he uses us to stand against all these false teachings out there. Now, when I first became a Christian, and the first few times I sang this hymn, I didn't really care for it. I didn't, you know, maybe it was the melody, I, I don't know, but... It just seemed like it was not a not a hymn that I would want to sing all the time. But as I grew in my walk with the Lord, grew in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, this hymn really became near and dear to my heart. There's a lot in the words. 
Moving on to the third stanza. And through this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. We hold the truth. That's what, what Martin Luther's trying to say. The prince of darkness grims. We tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. Yes, Satan is, his days are numbered. There's going to be a time when he gets thrown in the bottomless pit. And uh, Satan will not reign in this world anymore. Or sin and uh the thing that will reign in the world will be the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll set up his kingdom. For a thousand years he'll reign. And we that follow him now will reign with him. But then at the end of that thousand years, Satan will be let loose for just a short season. And he'll go back and deceive people again. But at the end... The great battle, when all the nations come against the Lord, and he is victorious, then the end will come. Satan and all his demons will be cast into the lake of fire. There'll be a great white throne judgment. And all those that have not followed Christ in this life will be judged at that white throne judgment. And then... The end will be, and we'll go into the eternal state, those that have believed and followed Christ. And all those that have not will be thrown in the lake of fire with the devil and his demons, his fallen angels. And then we'll go into the eternal state. Time will be no more. Well, I'm coming to the last stanza of this hymn, and I have to say this. this A brother stood up at the end when he was given announcements, and he talked about this last stanza and how it really touched him during worship. Well, it touched me the exact same way. So I shared this with that brother, that we were of kindred spirits. The Spirit had led us through a worship, and he'd led us to Christ being the Word of God. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And now we have this last stanza that word above all earthly power. No thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him with us sideth. Let goods and, goods and kindreds go, this mortal life also, this body they may kill, but God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Well, what do you think? The word above all earthly power, and we're talking about not only the uh, written word, but also the word of God. You know, Jesus Christ created the worlds as we know it. We see that from Scripture, not only in the first uh, chapter of John, but also in the first chapter of Hebrews. It talks about God used the Lord Jesus Christ to create everything. Go back to the book of Genesis. In the beginning was God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke 
All he had to do is speak the word. And everything came into being. The word of God is Christ Jesus. That's the point I'm trying to make today. So, that word above all earthly power, though thanks to them abideth, the spirit and the gifts are ours. The moment you give your life to the Lord, something happens. The spirit of God will come in and live with you. He will abide with you. He will be in you. And he brings all these things to the surface, that the word of God is truth. And, you know, there's a saying out there, seeing is believing, but God says a different, believing is seeing. You put your faith and trust in Christ, and God will open up the word of God to you. Well, I'm going to turn this off. Not back on screen. Well, with that said, that's kind of what I had to share with you this morning. And uh, I'm going to end my podcast here and uh, just think about what I'm saying. Some of these old hymns that we sing, they really touch the heart when you really listen to the words. And I was blessed yesterday when I heard this hymn, especially that last stanza. Just remember the world, the devil, everything you see now, everything that's visible will be destroyed by fire. But spirit, the things you cannot see will go on forever. But the best part about it is God's going to bring us back to the, I wouldn't call it the physical. He's going to give us a spiritual body body just like we have now. I mean, that you can see, touch, taste, all the things that are what we would call physical, but it'll be totally different. You have to read the Word of God to understand it. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Bye now. See you later. Uh, Have a great day. Lord bless. Bye for now.